Hey guys, welcome to YouTube. My name is, um, I don't remember, but that's okay. And I had a dream just about this, that you would absolutely fail at intro. It, I just, and I woke up in sweats. Uh, I'm always having bad dreams, Stuart. Just bad, bad dreams. I don't know why, though. There is a reason for this intro, by the way. <laughs> we are here to talk today. I'm a Captain Foley, by the way. I'm I, I just remembered. There you go. We're going to talk about Picard and his syndrome, which could be aromatic syndrome, could be other things. As you guys know, um, he contacted his former doctor uh, or chief medical officer from the Stargazer, uh, Dr. I guess they first named Moritz, something like that. He uh, contacted him to get approval to rejoin Starfleet, or at least go on an interstellar mission uh, to, to get certified. And uh, his doctor friend showed up and said, there's you know, everything's healthy. You're great in great condition for a relic. Um, however, there is that slight anomaly in the parietal lobe. Not stated when that was first discovered. It could have been maybe on the Stargazer. Who knows? But uh, we're going to talk a little about that and whether it is aromatic syndrome, if how, how it's going to affect the card, uh, if there's going to be a cure for it at some point in this up in this series. He's he's been he's been borgified. He was Lacutus. So it could be damage from that. It could be a lot of other things. And what was your reaction when they sort of threw that at us somewhat randomly, the uh, impending death storyline? Well, I, it's, it's the ticking clock. You need a ticking clock in most stories, most movies, most adventures, right? You need that ticking clock to get things done. Uh, the way his friend says, you know, maybe it'll kill you. Maybe this mission will kill you before the thing does. Sounds like it's not a pleasant future for Picard. Like he's going to be a vegetable or you know not be able to take care of himself kind of thing um which i didn't like uh, honestly um to see i hate seeing strong people taken down like that um yeah. like it wasn't it wasn't fun to watch xavier in logan yeah like it was great acting but it wasn't fun it wasn't fun to see logan be ill and hurt it's not fun it wasn't enjoyable the movie was great but it's like yeah but we're seeing the, the darkest point and certainly the the first two episodes are so packed full of storylines and reveals that adding something else upon else on else it it very much felt like it was well Rise of Skywalker ish ish where they're just throwing plot lines to fill the time I know they're playing for at least like three seasons and obviously Patrick can bow out whenever he wants to um, fine and this is this is his potential out and then one thing I noticed specifically about it is they were so unspecific it was the concept of a something with no real information at all, except it will kill you. But guess what? You'll die eventually anyway. I mean, he's already in his 90s in the show. You can live to 150 probably, but that's not the best time of life. So some people just die from heart attacks in their 60s now, let alone in their space 90s. I, I found it odd, yeah, that they did. They said it could be any number of uh, syndromes, and but they all have, they all have the same outcome. It's like okay, and there was no mention of aromatic syndrome. I mean, I can I jump in? Can I jump in before you say that as well? He also mentioned that scene that that um, all in the same way, but some are treatable, some aren't because some aren't treatable, implying that they all end up in death. But if some are treatable, that could prolong it. You know, you're not going to live in natural. You know, you're not going to die of natural causes, but you could live another X number of years. So there was incredible. They're not committing to it. You know, wow, if Picard gets six seasons, I guess the syndrome was only in early stages. Wow, we're in ten seasons. Jesus Christ! Oh, very early. You know what I mean? Um, if it's that popular, but yeah, right. Aromatic syndrome. That's obviously the 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 elephant Go -to in the room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is, in case you guys don't know, is because of all good things. The last episode of TNG, he <sighs> older Picard. And what year was it again? Twenty three ninety five. So four years before this. But obviously, that Picard had a very different life. Uh, but, but he was cured in this timeline. I'm not specifically sure. Aromatic syndrome is just basically dementia or Alzheimer's. Space dementia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was. People thought he was kind of senile, going crazy, imagining things when he's talking about all these different timelines and Q and all that. Uh, so it, it basically patterns itself after dementia or Alzheimer's. It's just, it's just somebody losing their mind, losing their ability to maintain, you know, themselves. Yeah. I guess. It was a rare genetic, rare genetic disorder. Which you know, it was carefully written that everything that he could be seeing could be that getting hallucinations, getting anger, getting all those things. It's it's not the exact same symptoms, 
but that's not to say whatever. And that was also a terminal. But if you look at how Patrick Stewart Picard acted the Elmwick Syndrome, he was actually in pretty damn good spirits. He took that news with the, well, like, okay then. That sucks, moving on. You know, so, it, you know. Which I'm, I mean, so, so did in this timeline as well. Obviously, he was good. But then in all good things, uh, I think they do mention specifically in the future portion that if they'd caught it earlier, it'd be fine. It's because they caught it quite late. Exactly. Exactly. And that, it gave that indication that because he learned this as a result of Q helping him, that he'd be able to get it cured. Well, because yeah. do, he does go to Beverly and says, Beverly, scam me. She's like, oh, wow, yeah, you've got the start of that. And so the, the you know, incredibly heavily implied, to the point of explicitly, explicitness was, yes, he was able to be cured as, you know, if you, if you, if you, Unfortunately, diagnosed with cancer in the early stage, it's they're most relatively easy to get rid of because they're just a single thing and a single thing, you know. So it's very relatable to modern diseases, and obviously this is now five years after that, four years after that, and he's he's functioning better than he was in all good things, and with harder things in his life, and a better haircut, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and in some ways better better wrinkles in some ways. He looks like a not an olded Patrick Stewart TNG. He looks like an old man Patrick Stewart of old age. Yes. Because you, you fake age a whole lot different to real age. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Like, it's hard to thin your face with makeup. It's kind of hard to do as as you get older, yeah. or whatnot. But I I mean the fact the fact they didn't say he had that aromatic syndrome tells me that it isn't because the doctor would know. You had it once before; it's it's come back. That would be explicit if it was. And you, you know, he was so, um, you know, not subtle about how the doctor approached onto Picard. He wouldn't hide what it was from him. That seems too beyond the realm. So it is something else, or a, you know, a byproduct. Like if you have one thing, you can have it turn to another thing. But yeah. it's not that syndrome. Was the absolute hint I got. Yeah, me too. Uh, and then and then they mention you know it's just an abnormality in your parietal lobe. Now when was that discovered? It, since this is his chief medical officer aboard the star, Stargazer, it almost seems like he knew he knew about it back then. Maybe uh, it was like oh yeah, that's that you know abnormality in your parietal lobe. You know we've known about this for a while. Yeah, they kind of get that kind of get that vibe. But the thing is, you mentioned a really really great point in one of our lives. We do lots of them um, about how the, you know, when the Borg went inside his brain and, you know, added stuff to his brain, added stuff to his whatever, that could change the chemistry. And this this version of whatever is wrong with him could be a byproduct of being assimilated, what, 35 years ago? Because TNG is actually, there's a decent span between Nemesis and TNG actually in years. That's about 35 years ago. And that's a long time for someone to, as a third of his life. So I'd be fine with saying, you know, most people aren't designed to be unassimilated and then live 30 years. <laughs> it's not really they don't do that assuming you're fine so it would be kind of interesting if if that gets worse throughout the season which would be sad but in fact if board technology is something that can keep it under wraps like part of being assimilated gives you it but also keeps it under wraps enough to be able to function um that would be an interesting because there's this because borg is a very advanced uh species if it's a species a culture is it a culture You'd assume there'd be something to deal with it. You'd assume, you know. Well, well, yeah. Either board technology, like you know, nanoprobes or whatever, nanites. <laughs> I'm sure the doctor um, can fix it with nanoprobes. He always does. <laughs> or, or like I said, because Soji's been working on de-assimilating Borg. Mm. Um, she's at least witnessed it because mm. uh, she's like more of a counselor kind of therapist person. Um, but. When she and Picard meet up, maybe there's something that either he or Hugh or even Seven of Nine can offer as a solution to this particular problem. Because it turns out to be Borg-related. Either it's a piece of Borg tech that's still there, which I, I find odd because they would have been able to detect it, hopefully. Or it's just damage from yeah. the Borg uh, assimilation techniques. Well, uh, you know, um, yeah, it makes me think about Iron Man. You know, his, 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 he got his great Iron Man, uh, you know, heart thing by trying to keep his own heart alive and giving him this power pack in his chest. But eventually, you remove the things that give him the, the, you know, going close to his heart and killing him. So, just like Picard, the thing is in his brain. So, maybe they can remove the initial, you know, bullets, fragments, as it were. Um, it just takes a specialist person or whatnot. 
But I think it'd be sad if he does die. I know, obviously, Patrick Stewart loved his, his Logan death, which was... I, t I, I rewatched our interview with him, and he says, you know, why well, I asked him, how do you want Picard to die? And he said, I... S story comes first. You know, had a Logan... Had, had Xavier die naked in a pickup truck. So he, he's, he's, he doesn't need a, a great death in the, in the classic sense of a hero. He'll, he'll take a thematic death over an actual cool death. And so you can imagine Picard... If Patrick, you know, Patrick will Patrick will have the final say about how Picard dies, you know, he will absolutely be saying yes or no to it, however that is, and if it involves him going crazy in a great scene and then you know whatevering, I'm sure he'll he'll want to do that as an actor, um, end that character like Harrison wanted to end that character and all that all that stuff, and then Hamill was forced to end that character. Great, thanks, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, but it makes me wonder though, do they have a plan for it, or is this like writing on the go kind of thing? So you're saying, is, like, it, is it the J.J. Abrams mystery box, or is it... Yeah, the Star Wars new trilogy plan. <laughs> Make it up as we go, who cares? I don't know. Um, I think there's a, a, a resolution to it at the end of this mm. season. Um, I mm. really feel like we're going to get a, a fix, either from Soji or from Dr. Maddox or from the Borg or from Hugh. Somebody's going to help be able to help him with this. Um, is my feeling. And it'd be, it'd, I think it'd be totally acceptable as a plot point to solve it by the end, but then whoever the villains end up being, like, it's in his brain. It doesn't cure it, it just recesses it, and therefore they can reactivate the disease structure, but, like, it, it's now growing ten times as fast. You know, they can they can undo it to then redo it later on um, as the big final act of the super baddies. But, yeah, I did, just Aromatic Syndrome, it's obvious, but also it was cured. Um, but... Again, I think the scene was the scene was carefully crafted to tell us something and yet tell us nothing. Yeah, I mean, you say it was cured, but no mention of it. There should have been a mention of it at least. You know, we did the pre, we did the early, you know, eradication of your aromatic syndrome. It might be coming back. A line like that is all we need. Um, or, or to say, um, a lot of the possibilities, Jean Luc, are based on your aromatic syndrome. Yes, we cured that, but. In doing so, your brain was affected, and there are always potential side effects, and some of these could be caught, you know, um, which would kind of be a nice touch. It's like he was fixed, but as a canon, as a canony thing, it's like there is, there is some nice poetry to respect because you know we know Discovery doesn't respect the canon in the, the sort of the way we'd like, but actually have him or start the vineyard and be ill like all good things. I mean, these are connected tissues that we could not have hoped for based on Discovery and how they treated the canon. Um, Maybe. Maybe the uh, the thing in his parietal lobe was Q. Q's like hit hiding in there, just like being a little he, bit of a, a shit. renegade. Yeah, he's a uh, yeah he's, <laughs> he's on the run for Q collectively. But the only place to hide is, in, is a ninety year old man's brain. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Great way to end, Stuart. Great way to end. Nonsense to end. I know. Put your theories down below. What do you guys think about this? Is it aromatic syndrome? Um, you know, let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear them um anyway uh and also click the notification icon click the subscribe button click the like button do the things mm -hmm. don't forget like the card would and like i did earlier do it yes Comments. other things though patreon great way to support us every single month really really important do help if you can paypal uh it's you know everyone knows paypal but if you send a paypal to us we get almost all the money and it goes towards show production costs, and that is amazing. Or join our lives, you get to talk to us live. We're pre-recorded right now. It could be literally any year right now. It could be 2030. It could even be 2299 or 2399. Mm. Who knows? Hi. Hello. Um, uh, whatever I was saying there. Super Chat Lives, there you go. Kick support if you can by joining the community um, and uh, have fun and watch other content. There's so much. Enjoy. See, it's contagious. Even Samuel's getting yeah. it now via yeah. Skype. Yeah. Anyway, guys, until next time, I'm Commander Foley. And I'm Admiral Commander Super Lieutenant Cockins. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.